Hey guys, Mitchell from Game Frontier, and I am joined along with Ted, who is the executive producer on Phoenix Rage. And so I just got done playing it. We did a James Rose Games, which you should see soon, hopefully. And uh, yeah, just why don't you give us the general gist of what Phoenix Rage is all about? Phoenix Rage is just a kick you in the face, puzzle platformer, think Sonic means Super Meat Boy, elements of Kirby. It's it's an homage to all those games that I grew up loving on the, the NES and SNES days that before there was save files, before there was easy difficulty. Th th this game doesn't have difficulties and you don't need them. It's interesting because the reason why I'm doing this interview is because James just got finished playing and he literally has a bruise on his eye because he got kicked in the face by Phoenix Rage. Uh, so. Uh, one of the things that struck me about the game uh, is it, it feels very, very precise. It, it, it kind of brings back memories of Super, uh, Super Meat Boy. Can you talk a little bit about how important uh, very precise controls were, were in a game like this? Yeah, I mean, the main thing is that with a game like this, you want, if it's going to be punishingly hard, we want to make sure that it's fair, though. So the developers took time, they before any graphics, before all the, the pretty colors and everything, they worked really hard on getting the controls as tight and as just fine-tuned as possible. All the hitboxes and the detection of that, so that when you die and you're gonna die a lot, it's your fault. It's, yeah, you can't blame the game, you can't blame the controller, you can't blame your sister, your brother. You died because you didn't hit the button right, you didn't press this right, so. Cool. So, another thing that strikes me about the game, and this is something that I think a lot of people may initially see about the game and be like, huh, how could it be so hard if you have unlimited jumps and unlimited dashes? Can you talk a little bit about that decision to make the game so that you can dash as many times as you want, you can jump as many times as you want, but it's still this really hard and hardcore, you know, game? Yeah, I mean, the level design is, it's all about that. It's structured so that at the beginning, you're thinking, okay, this is easy. It's, it's baby stepping you into there, and then you, you start learning that you have unlimited jumps and unlimited dashes, and you, you have that guise of like, oh, okay, I got this. And then the levels start to really get hard. The ramp up is, is quick, but it, it feels right. But you'll, you'll, you'll soon learn that even though you would think it makes it easier, it far from makes it easier. One of the things that I saw in the game, uh, a lot of the enemies, they were very static, you know, they had very predictable patterns. Uh, as the game goes on, what kind of enemies will we be facing, and how, how does that impact the difficulty? Um, there's different sizes, ones that kind of chase you, just different elements, but the, the thing that's really neat is that you talked about the patterns, is when you die in this game, everything that was moving on the screen, screen is still moving, nothing resets, so as you're following a pattern, the pattern can kind of change because you'll be respawning after a death, but that same enemy that you just killed you could still be moving towards you and kill you a second time right after a respawn. Yeah, just speaking of that, like one of the things about Super Meat Boy is that whenever you die, everything resets, and so you kind of have like a muscle memory that develops uh, whenever you, you play a level. Like, uh, you know that this guy's gonna be here right at the start, so you can just jump over him. That's not the case in Phoenix Rage, it's always, you know, changing. And I think that's a really cool uh, aspect of the game, so I just wanted to say, very well done. <laughs> uh, can we talk a little bit about uh, the, the the length of the game? Length of, the, of a game like this is very important, especially like indie platformers. Uh, how many how many levels are we looking at here? Yeah, over 200 levels. I mean, there's nine worlds. Each world has about 20 20 levels. There's bosses on on each world, but then you get to go through the entire game again in challenge mode, where you're limited by the number of jumps and dashes that you can do. So going back to unlimited jump and dash, now that is not the case and we've actually fine-tuned the exact amount that you should be able to complete a level with and you have to do that with all the levels. And then even further mode, mode you go into god mode, which flips it on its head and now instead of avoiding all the enemies, you have to attack all the enemies through the, the hundred and some odd levels again all throughout the worlds. And then there's more stuff on top of that. Um, one of the things that you're going to find is there's hidden levels where if you go through a certain portal in the right amount of time, you'll actually get to see a glimpse of the original prototype levels, which is really gives you a, a look at the kind of the development process of how they made Phoenix Rage. And you, there's also uh, collectible cookies in each level. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what's in it for people if they find all those cookies? 
Yeah, so if you get the cookies and you better get the cookie. You better get the cookie, James. <laughs> you actually unlock real world cookie recipes. I'm one of the developer's sister. She's an excellent baker and she created um, world specific cookies from her own brain and they are delicious. You get the recipes every step to make them so you can take the cookies from the game and bring them into the real world and put them in your belly. So there you go, Phoenix Rage not only doubling as a indie uh, indie platformer but also as a cookie cookbook so you don't even have to go buy those anymore. Uh, is there anything else that you want to add in terms of when's, when's this coming out, what platforms? Yeah, it's coming out on PC via Steam and other digital distributors on September 24th and then it's coming to Xbox One and PS4 early 2015. And I have to ask one more question for my buddy over there. He wants to know about the bird. So the birds that you will find in the game is actually a really cool element. I mean, one thing you'll notice is that we try to keep the UI clean. And so the birds act as little hints. So they kind of show you a, a good path, like a suggestion of, hey, stop here. Maybe go like this way without really putting flashing arrows or different things that are really going to get in your way because you need to focus in this game. So James was actually right. The birds did help him through it. Wow. Very impressive. All right. Well, I just, he wanted me to ask that because he wanted to validate his, uh, his, uh, his thing. Watch James vs. Games if you're confused as to what I'm talking about. But ladies and gentlemen, that is Phoenix Rage. Thank you so much, Ted. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.